It may make for titillating reading in the women's magazines, but it's a deadly matter. Anorexia claims around 1% of the female population, and up to one in five of its victims will eventually die of it. It has the highest mortality rate of all psychiatric illnesses, including depression. And the girls it affects are getting younger and younger. It got Juliet Williams when she was still at primary school. Today, she's close to becoming another statistic. Amanda Miller reports. Juliet Williams, 28 years old and a walking skeleton. A young woman that should be in the prime of her life, but instead she's dangerously close to death. Juliet has had anorexia since she was 11, and for 17 years she's been killing herself day by day in a protracted, perverse form of suicide. I need to learn how to live again, you know? I don't even remember what it's like. I don't remember what, why you would want to live, you know? I don't, I don't know, I don't get it, like I don't understand. No. It's a mystifying illness that not only distorts the body, but also the mind. Put this frail young woman in front of a mirror and she sees a completely different Juliet Williams than what we see. If I'm feeling anxious or if someone's put a suggestion in my head, um, like my doctor's told me I'm stable or even that I've gained weight or something like that, um, then my reflection immediately changes. Um, and you see a fat person? Yeah, or... You see a fat Juliet? Yeah, a fat Juliet. I'm going to go on backwards. No. Okay. The backwards, <laughs> okay, the backwards is fine. But you can't ever ask what Juliet weighs, and she must never know. So if I knew that number, I'd be on the scale, God knows how many times a day wanting it to get lower and lower and lower and doing anything I could. Like many anorexics, she is addicted to exercise. Juliet was working out at the gym for up to three hours a day, but her GP asked her to stop. At any point, she could go into cardiac arrest. The only fix she gets now is 15 minutes of power plate, a form of vibration training. You know, at the moment, I'm not trying to get sicker, but I'm, I'm getting sicker. And the mental illness that's devouring Juliet also consumes her parents, Lynn and Simon Williams. They've spent nearly half a million dollars struggling to keep their daughter alive, and also struggling to explain what exactly is killing her. A lot of people don't get it. They say, well, you know, why don't you just eat? There's the food, eat it. It doesn't work that way. It seems perverse, but like most anorexics, Juliet is obsessed with food and cooking. She bakes every day and makes a lavish meal for her parents at night, never even tasting a single mouthful. Yeah, I know people find it weird and they find it kind of uncomfortable and stuff as well, but you know, like it is something that I really enjoy doing and I guess my parents kind of feel like there's not many of those things, so they just let me do it, and, and it's nice of them. <laughs> do you want that food? No. How, how can you not want that food? Because there's too much, like, baggage that goes along with it. Like, if I ate that piece of feta, then suddenly I couldn't have anything tomorrow. That piece of feta? Yeah. That's just insane. And even though that might be less calories than my daily allowance, I'm not, I don't trust it. She's trapped inside a sinister world of numbers, calculating calories, weighing her body and measuring her dress size. Cooking means she can be close to food, but avoid the fear of fat. Couscous, roast veggie kind of salad. She is the best chef I know. And she will conjure up food that is fantastic every night. And we sit in the other room loving the food but feeling incredibly silly about it. I mean, well, I'd rather not be doing it. But and then you may he... say, well, why, why do you do it? Okay, well, the reason we do it is because 
For a moment, when she's creating that food, I think she feels normal. Alone in the kitchen, their daughter's indulging in what's normally a very private ritual, eating the one and only so-called meal for the day. At the moment, she lives on about 15 button mushrooms a day with a side of mustard. And Juliet knows that that adds up to exactly 68 calories compared to the 2,500 calories most people eat in a day. But Juliet, people will look at you and say, oh, for goodness sake, have something to eat, have a feed, look after yourself, get well. I just, I just can't do it. I don't even know how to do it. Like, yeah, I just get to a block whenever I even think about it. I just, it's just too scary. And like many girls who suffer anorexia, Juliet was a high achiever as a child. When she was 11, she was teased for being chubby and she says she found a book on anorexia and used it like a manual. I've always been a perfectionist and so I like to do things properly. Sounds kind of ridiculous considering now that I'm 28, but I still think about that you know, proving to those kids who teased me that I could be thin. Of course, a lot of children uh, are overweight at school, but don't have a problem. They just work through it. So I guess we just thought that's what would happen, didn't we? In her case, she was very sensitive and it didn't, and it was really deep. And So how much of that sits with you now? Is well, there guilt? Yeah, you feel guilty because you think, well, I should have picked it up. I mean, I should have known what was going on. I mean, it doesn't mm. matter how many times you get told, it's nothing to do with you. Of course it isn't. Don't blame yourselves. You have to think, of course it must be something to do with me. Of course it must be something that we did. Juliet says her anorexia began as a constant companion that kept talking to her. That voice started off to me as as a friendly voice, a helpful voice, that kind of came in at age 11 and said to me, hey, you want to lose weight? You want to take control of your life? You want to be beautiful? You want to be an actor? You want anything you've ever wanted? You want perfection, you know? Well, I can help you there. All you have to do is, like, do what I say. A caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still. And his tune is heard on a... Juliet was a talented actress and performer and got into drama school. My first love is the theatre. But, I but the relationship with her invisible friend had soured. The voice became evil and destructive. I can tell you now. Did you hurt me? It'll isolate me, it'll try and keep me away from anything that's pleasurable, that wants me to die. You know, that's all its commands. The end result is my death. 